do narcissists feel any guilt for the things that they've done? Do they have any remorse at all? What does it take for a narcissist to feel guilty for the way that they've treated people? Welcome to Looking Behind the Mirror, where we explore narcissism and take our lives back as we make sense out of nonsense. As a quick disclaimer, everything I say is based on my opinions and my personal experiences. I'm not a professional, and if you're really struggling, I encourage you to seek professional help. I am providing links below for you. The simple answer to the question, do narcissists ever feel any guilt, is no. I mean, generally, no. They really don't feel guilty about anything that they do. But it's not quite this simple. So I'd like to dive into this a little more deeply and explain why this is and on what level they may feel some guilt. Generally speaking, for something that they have consciously chosen to do, such as abusive behavior, they are not going to feel guilty for that. That was something they did with some sort of sense of twisted righteousness. So they're not going to feel remorseful for that. It may be remotely possible for some of them to feel a little bit of guilt for something that maybe they did purely by accident. I'm going to give you a really quick, simple example. Like if you baked a cake and they accidentally tipped it over and it was truly an accident, they might feel a little remorseful about that or a little guilty. They might apologize. Kind of like if they go around the corner and they bump into you. A narcissist is not beyond saying, oh, sorry. Does that mean that they feel true remorse or guilt? I mean, I'm not really sure where you can draw that line, but Either way, these are things that they did on accident. These weren't things that they decided were a good idea. These are just things that happened that they may be able to apologize for and maybe even feel a little bit guilty for, like if they ruined a cake that you spent all day baking. But something that they decided to do, something that they did out of anger, something that they did to hurt you, that's nothing they will ever feel sorry for. Something they did to make themselves feel better about themselves, that's nothing they're ever gonna feel guilty about. So it's kind of funny that they might feel a little guilty if they ruined a cake that you spent all day baking, but they won't feel any guilt for lying, cheating, stealing all your money, ruining your reputation, getting you fired, getting you evicted. That's fine, that won't bother them one bit. In order to explain why this is, we need to understand a narcissist's shame. Narcissists may not feel much guilt, but they do feel an enormous amount of shame. And this is not the same thing as guilt. A narcissist's shame is really the cause of all of their behavior. Really all of their biggest problems come from their shame. And I think most narcissists are not aware of their shame. They're not conscious of it. Even some narcissists that are conscious of the fact that they are a narcissist are not conscious of their shame. And what is this shame? How does it differ from guilt? Guilt and remorse is something that we feel after we've done something wrong that probably hurt someone. We feel bad about something we did because we feel bad about what happened as a result of what we did and how much it hurt someone. But shame is completely internalized. Shame is how we see ourselves. For a narcissist, shame is something that's very, very deeply embedded in their psyche, in their sense of identity. It really follows them everywhere they go, and it is monstrous compared to a normal person's feelings of shame. It's a little voice in their head, or a thought, or a perception in their head that's always looming, that's always saying things like, you don't deserve that they are trying to trick you. They don't really respect you. Nobody likes you. You're not really as smart as these people. You're actually the stupidest person in the room. You're the worst. You don't even really deserve to live. You're a disgusting piece of garbage. Narcissists have these thoughts and feelings within them 24 seven. And like I said, as hard as it is to believe, many of them aren't even consciously aware of this. It's like this monster that's living under the floorboards, but part of them is always aware of it, and part of them is always trying to overcompensate, trying to deny the existence of this shame, trying to cancel it out, drown it out. This is why they are so grandiose. This is why they try to convince themselves of such unrealistic 
things about themselves. Like, you're the greatest. You deserve everything. Nobody else deserves anything. Everything should be all about you. You're the best. You're the smartest. You're the best looking. No one should ever even have a right to criticize you. You're so perfect and infallible. You're God's gift to earth. These are the messages. These are the voices that a narcissist will focus on and feed and look for external validation. They look for proof that these things are true because they know that these things have to be true because if they're not then the only alternative to a narcissist is that all those shameful things are true that they're the worst that they don't deserve anything that they're stupid that everyone hates them that everybody's trying to take advantage of them that nobody cares about them that they don't even deserve to live so how does this relate to guilt and shame well i've explained what shame is guilt think about what guilt is guilt is recognizing that you've done something wrong and for a narcissist, because of their extreme sense of shame, they have a very black and white way of looking at the world. They either have to drown that shame out completely with the complete opposite message, or they have to succumb to that shame. They can only believe in the shame 100% or in the opposite message 100%. There is nothing in the middle for them, nothing in between. So they either have to believe wholeheartedly that they are a worthless, despicable piece of garbage that doesn't deserve to walk the earth, or they need to believe that they are infallible, that they are perfect, that they are the only thing that matters, that they are the most wonderful creature that's ever existed. There's nothing in the middle for them. So when th they encounter a situation where they may feel guilty about something, Guilt is recognition of doing something wrong. And for an infallible, perfect, wonderful human being that never does anything wrong, this just does not fit that equation. If they've done anything wrong, if they've made any mistakes, then they have to accept all of this shame. They have to accept an avalanche of shame that they have buried, that they aren't even conscious of, and they just can't do that. That's why they can't let that guilt in. They've got to block it out. They've got to come up with every excuse in the book that justifies everything they've ever done because they've got to believe that they're 100% infallible and perfect. Now, how does this relate to you? If you are close to a narcissist, it's supposed to be your job to help them play this game with themselves. You're supposed to help them block out that shame. You're supposed to help them believe that they're the greatest thing that ever existed and that they're the only thing that matters. That's what supply is. You're supposed to be constantly helping them convince themselves that they're the best thing that ever existed and that all of these terrible, awful thoughts about themselves are not true. And when you don't do your job right in their eyes, now you're the enemy. When you do anything that doesn't fit the narrative of they're the greatest, most important, wonderful, infallible thing that ever existed, they actually feel like you're attacking them when you're not helping them play this game with themselves. So you might just be sitting there one night and you might just think, wait, um, did he take out the garbage? And you might just say, did you take out the garbage? And if he forgot to take out the garbage, What's he gonna hear? He's not going to hear, did you take out the garbage? He's going to hear, are you a completely worthless piece of garbage that can't even remember to take out the garbage? So he's gonna feel really offended by that because that's how narcissists hear any kind of, anything that could even be perceived as criticism. Even if you in no way meant for it to be a criticism, even if it was just an innocent question that you just wanted to know the answer to. But see, in this scenario, you have inadvertently supported this shame and you've tried to make them feel guilty about themselves too, even though that's not really what you were trying to do. But in the narcissist's mind, that is what you were trying to do. So now you need to pay for that. You need to learn that that's not your place, that you are only there to help them feel awesome about themselves. You're only there to continually help them convince themselves that they're perfect and infallible. So now when they do nasty things to you in an instance like this, they feel justified because they feel like you were attacking them and they might get abusive they might insult you they might do all kinds of awful cruel things to you they they might just torment you for days over this 
they might even wait an hour. Like maybe you won't even know that it's a response to you asking if they took the garbage out. And they might just start getting really mean and nasty with you. Are they gonna feel guilty for that? No, they're not gonna feel any guilt because they feel justified. And it can get even more petty than this. The narcissist has a magical way of thinking and the narcissist thinks that they are the center of the universe and that everybody can read their mind because they're the center of the universe. If they're the only person that really exists or really matters, of course everyone around them can read their mind because everyone around them just can't stop thinking about them, right? So let's say that they're in a particularly bad mood. Maybe they're feeling a little bit vulnerable. Maybe they're feeling that shame creeping up a little bit. They're feeling a little unsure about themselves. And, and I should say that this shame is no joke. It feels like a monster look lurking in the corner. I mean, this is what they're running from 24 seven. This is what they're trying to block out 24 seven. So maybe they're feeling a little on edge and then they look over and you're wearing a yellow shirt and you know they hate yellow, but maybe you had no idea that they hated the color yellow. But of course they assume that you must be wearing that yellow shirt just to make them angry. You must be doing that on purpose just to agitate them. When you're wearing a yellow shirt and they hate yellow, what are you saying to them? You're saying to them, you don't matter. I'm gonna wear a color that you hate because you don't matter. And what does that do? That's one of those voices that they're fighting against. That's one of those beliefs that they're trying to block out. And now, you've gone and done it. Now you've worn a yellow shirt and, and you're probably going to get harassed and tormented and abused and you'll have no idea that it's because of the color of the shirt you're wearing. Just like the narcissist can only see themselves as a completely worthless piece of garbage or a completely wonderful, infallible, perfect human being, they can only see you as 100% loyal, infallible, idealized human being or a traitor somebody that's just out to get them that can see what a terrible despicable piece of garbage they are and and that's how they're going to see you if they see you that way now they feel completely 100 percent justified in anything they do to you to make you pay for that to make you pay for making them feel like a piece of garbage so why should they feel guilty about anything they do to you when in their mind you're the one that let them down you're the traitor, you're the one that tried to make them feel bad about themselves. For them to feel guilty, the guilt affirms the shame that they're trying to block out. The guilt is saying you really are a piece of trash. Any amount of guilt at all for anything that they've done, especially something that they've done to try to defend themselves against attacks on their ego that they are imagining. For them to admit I did something bad and I should feel a little bit of remorse for this bad thing I did to someone, that opens a floodgate for them to not just feel guilt for that one little thing they did, but to feel an avalanche of shame and guilt and remorse, I suppose, if they let that in, but an avalanche of shame that they just can't carry, that they just don't know what to do with. And if you try to get them to feel guilt or remorse, now you're an even, even bigger threat than you were before. Whatever awful thing you did to make them lash out at you or make them do something that would hurt you, now your sins are even greater because now you're trying to get them to feel bad about themselves. Whatever it is that they did to you or anybody else, in their minds, they are justified. Their situation is special. This is different for them. The rules don't apply to them. They might think, yeah, it's not very nice to sit and yell at someone and call them names and throw a tantrum and throw and break things. But look at everything that you did. What did you expect me to do? Of course I was gonna get that angry after the terrible things you did, after wearing that yellow shirt. I wanna tell a story that you might find a little interesting. I, I think it's kind of interesting and it's just something to think about. One of the most narcissistic people I've ever known in my life, um, and I'll try to keep it somewhat anonymous, but um, this person was extremely narcissistic and I knew this person for quite a number of years. And there was one instance in which I think this person showed some guilt and remorse. 
and I look back on it and I, I just, I think it's really interesting. This person was fishing one day and caught a little baby fish about, I don't know, maybe this big. And normally this person would throw the baby fish back, but this person accidentally cast the line up this way and the baby fish flew off into the trees. And it was kind of sad because it was this little baby fish that this person was going to throw back and you know now it's lost in the trees and it's definitely gonna die there and it was just kind of sad and i remember that this person actually seemed to feel a little guilty about it and it, the interesting thing about this is that this was just really remarkable it was very unusual to see this person showing any signs of remorse now this person wasn't like crying or you know having a really hard time with it. It wasn't like this person spent the rest of the day feeling terrible, but this person just showed some signs of remorse. Just, I could tell, actually felt kind of bad about it. And I, I know this might seem like, well, that would be a perfectly normal response for anyone in that situation. But in all the years I knew this person, this is the only time I can think of that this person showed any glimmer of remorse. And when I think about it, I mean, I can only speculate on why this person showed remorse. Oh, and I I should probably say this person had lots to be remorseful for, had done much worse than accidentally cast a baby fish off into the trees. But um, this was the only time I saw any hint of remorse. And I think maybe one thing was it was an accident. It was just a quick, oops, accident. So this wasn't done in order to defend the narcissist's ego. Also, the fish itself, animals don't offend the ego of narcissists. They don't challenge the ego. They don't injure the ego. So uh, it would take some real mental gymnastics for a narcissist to convince themselves that an animal is trying to get the better of them. <laughs> so this is why a lot of narcissists are actually able to connect on some level with some animals. But in this instance, I, I'm guessing that because the fish was clearly innocent and because this was purely an accident, I think that these things combined allowed the narcissist to feel a little bit of guilt, a little bit of remorse. And I think those two things were a very important part of this, that this wasn't done to defend the ego and it was an accident. So just food for thought. I've always thought that was really interesting and I don't know, might be something that's interesting to you as well. I also wanna differentiate between psychopaths, narcissists, and malignant or toxic narcissists. I'm almost always talking about just garden variety narcissists in all my videos. Psychopaths are very similar in some ways, but very different in others. And I don't feel quite as confident talking about psychopaths, but I think on this topic, psychopaths truly have no guilt or remorse. They just don't feel those kinds of emotions. Whereas a narcissist kind of does have guilt or remorse, but they're burying it. They're burying these feelings of shame and, and they've got to block out these feelings of guilt so that the shame doesn't swallow them whole. They're juggling all of these incredibly impossible emotions that they have no idea how to deal with. Whereas a psychopath just really doesn't have any of these problems in the first place. They just don't have any empathy. They don't care. They're not struggling with shame. There's nothing that they're blocking out. They just really don't care. They truly have no guilt or remorse and they're not playing any games with themselves. So I think that's a little bit different. And a malignant narcissist, I don't talk a lot about that. Um, maybe I should do a video about it. I just, I personally haven't had a lot of experiences with malignant narcissists and that's why I don't talk about them very much. But malignant narcissists are basically narcissists that are also sadistic and narcissists that are motivated much more by fear by making people feel afraid of them than they are making people admire and pay attention to them. So they're quite different. And because they are sadistic, I think that changes their, um, their guilt mechanism because I think that they really, really don't feel guilty about things that they're actually taking a lot of pleasure in. So I guess I just kind of wanted to make those caveats. 
if you are dealing with either a psychopath or a malignant narcissist, that does change things a little bit. It might not really change the end result. You know, no matter how, what way you slice it, the narcissist is not gonna feel guilty or remorseful for the terrible things they do to you. But depending on whether or not they're a psychopath, a narcissist, or a malignant narcissist, the mechanisms are gonna be a little different. The reasons they don't feel guilty are gonna be a little bit different. Narcissists can't afford to acknowledge guilt. They can't carry it. They don't know what to do with it. They can't process it. If they acknowledge guilt, they've got to acknowledge this enormous monster of shame that they spend their whole lives running away from. And it's just, a lot easier to run away from the guilt. I hope this helps. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment below any ideas you have for me for future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video and would like to see more like it in the future. Until next time, thanks, bye.